But 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 like you're right because I mean, that was my entire life. Like I was a meritorious staff sergeant, combat awards, awards for valor, like all those things lining up for me to be. I wanted to be the sergeant major of the Marine Corps. That was my goal. I used to tell everybody all the time, I want to be a sergeant major of the Marine Corps. That's my goal. That's my goal. That's my goal. But I look back now and the the situations that I found myself in that led to my discharge, like the PTSD, the traumatic brain injury, all those things. If I didn't have that in my back pocket, I wouldn't have the perspective on life that I do now. And I think looking back, it's a it's a huge blessing. Like I always wanted to be in that role because I thought one of my biggest strengths was mentoring junior Marines. Now I have the opportunity to talk to so many more service members. So many more people get my input on a weekly, bi-weekly basis about what my ideas are for the world, how I view things, how I view people, how I feel like you should deal with conflict and deal with different political issues or different social issues. My voice is amplified because of Barstool and 99% of what I do at Barstool is humorous. But I'm also in a position where I can talk about serious shit like mental health. I fucked up big time as a company gunny. I was awful in everything that I preach against now, as far as being the person who PTSD is a weakness. Uh, Like you shouldn't do, you should just man up, man through it, get through it. Everybody's done it. Nobody in world war two was bitching about it. Nobody in Vietnam was bitching about it. Why the fuck are you bitching about it? You little pussy. Now I look back and I regret huge like big time the biggest regrets in my life deal with that type of subject that i wasn't the staff nco that i needed to be to a lot of different marines and i feel like this is a second opportunity for me to right that wrong well let's uh let's talk about that actually for a second we um we had talked about this a little bit with with one of our previous guests but i I think it's probably worth talking about with you um that very well might have been the correct answer at the time because think about it, right? You guys are training for combat. You're training for war. We've been in war for the past 20 years. Um, I was in a, I, I was in a uh, infantry unit. I was a medic uh, on an infantry uh, line. Kyle was with a uh, SEAL team three and eight and Deb eight, grew and, eight and, ten. Eight eight and ten. 10 or whatever, whoever he was with. I can't remember. Um, but you're training for war at that time, right? So mm-hmm. telling guys that they need to suck it up sometimes might be the right answer. It might be the wrong answer I, at some point. I, I understand what you're saying, but I also feel like we view this in such a, a, a skewed way. Like the way that we have been taught military mental health is just, to me, it's just so incredibly fucked up. You would never look at somebody that's like, hey, Gunny, my fucking tooth is hurting, man. Like I, <laughs> I, clear, I, have a, I need a root canal bad. Listen, you little fucking bitch. Suck yeah. it up. We're going to combat. <laughs> to me, you got to view mental health almost like as the brain dentist is what I call it on my show, where you might not be sure you don't have the time or the ability to sit back and lay on a couch for fucking 10 hours and talk about all your problems that you ever had and what your dad did, and what your mom did and how it's all fucked up. You don't have time for that, but you definitely have time to go get some checkups to be like, hey, the last appointment that I was on, I saw a kid with a brain hanging out. Like I, I might need to talk to somebody about that. I think that that is something that should be absolutely encouraged. Antidepressants is nothing to be ashamed of. Anti-anxiety is nothing to be ashamed of. And the more that we get to that spot in the military, the better off you're going to be. Because if you have a group of people who are trying to hide depression and push through the depression or push through anxiety, you're going to have tactical mistakes. You're going to have people that aren't paying attention when they need to be. You need people in combat zones to be as sharp as they absolutely can. Yeah. And you can't do that with the gorilla monster that is depression hanging on your shoulders. No, no. you can't. And I, I was more talking about, I'm not talking about like back in the rear. I was talking about more like downrange, like Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, like I don't a, think we should have stress cards in actual combat when yeah. rounds are flying down. We're like, like, hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey. hey there, <laughs> Training yeah, time out. Little, Training time out. Guys, time. Tell us. Yeah, Your boy's I mean, depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a little quick time out. I'll meet you back here in a week when I got to go see the wizard for a yeah. can we Can we just take a day off, dude? Just one day. That's all I'm asking. I, just, I mean, that would be nice, though, right? Like, it if there's like a gentleman's agreement. Kind of like in, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but in the Civil War, they used to have a gentleman's agreement because diarrhea was so prevalent <laughs> on the front lines there and dysentery and shit that they had a gentleman's agreement. 
if somebody was clearly shitting in a hole, you do not shoot them. You do not rush at them. You don't do anything. You have a gentleman's agreement. That man has diarrhea. Leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> 